trip that Rob Lanier said. Uh, he's got to sit out. He can't start this one. And I like that, John. He's he's making you accountable. And, and that's one thing I think that Coach Lanier has set the tone for this team throughout this season early on is you have to be accountable. And I think it's going to pay dividends down the stretch. As yeah, so you wins the tap in the blue, moving left to right. And great to have you along for the ride. An early three by Jalen Smith. He knocks it down. And SMU did not shoot well from three the other day. And that's huge for Jalen Smith. He wasn't very aggressive last game, only with four points, shooting one for three. And an aggressive Jalen Jalen Smith is a good Jalen Smith for the Mustangs. Starting lineup for the Leathernecks, and head coach Ted Bordeaux says he's got about 10, 11 guys that he can play, and almost any of them can start. But they're wanting to post up. Petrakis gets double teamed. Can he get out of it? Petrakis steps through, finds West. Backing in, only three to shoot. West hook shot in the lane, not there, but the follow is by Drew Cisse, the transfer from Missouri St. Louis. Now, in that possession, the Mustangs defensively were connected. You just had a little bit of poor rotation on the weak side, allowing an easy bucket on that second chance scoring opportunity. But Western Illinois is a team that's going to post up a lot throughout this day. Harris comes up short, but the rebound out to BJ Edwards getting his first start. As a Mustang, four points, five rebounds, three assists as he came off the bench on Monday. And that's a nice thing. Drops it down. Ambrose Hilton finishes with the left. I love the patience by B.J. Edwards down on the block. He allowed the play to develop, waited for the defense to converge, and then dimed it to Ambrose Hilton for the easy bunny down on the lane. All the way outside, Ryan Myers gives it up. Extra pass. The track is off the rim. Long rebound tapped out. Western Illinois out rebounded UTSA on the road by nine the other day. Not only did they have nine, they had 21 offensive rebounds, and that's something that Coach Lanier made a focus of during practice the last two days. Two guys at six foot eleven in the starting lineup. Ambrose Hilton can't hit on the reverse. We'll hear from the third member of our crew, Brianna Sorensen, a little bit later on just how big the Leathernecks are. Again, watching the play develop, B.J. Edwards sees his man, Ambrose Hilton, down on the block, who created his space early. Felt that body on him, went away from the defense to the baseline, created that contact to get to the free throw. Ambrose Hilton, the guy that is really evolving as a leader. He's using the language of the team as well for Rob Lanier. It's a guy that Rob Lanier knew back when he was coming out of Canada, out of Toronto, really liked him then and finally gets to coach him now here at SMU. Well, I like the way Ambrose Hilton has been aggressive early on in this game because Coach Lanier felt that throughout the preseason, Ambrose Hilton in practices, in the scrimmage, you always felt his presence, which you did in the last game. And so he made it important for him to early on put his imprint on this game and make his presence felt. Western Illinois put up 28 threes last time out against UTSA. First steal for SMU. They had 13 of these puppies against Sagu on oh, Monday. Right. Stepping through Samuel Williamson for his first two. And Samuel Williamson is another player I expect to be aggressive and to do a little bit more different things than he did last game. He's a player that's kind of your Swiss Army knife. He can handle the rock, rebound, play good defense. But he wasn't very aggressive on the board, so expect to see him more on the glass. Oh, and he was one of the leading rebounders for this team last year. But, to your point, he gets right in there defensively, creates some more havoc. And that's what they like for him to do. He's the man that comes over in the trap, big, preventing the offensive player to see anyone to pass. And then he is able to get that loose ball and take it in transition. And that's where SMU is better when they use their defense to create their offense. Rob Lanier wants to play quick on both sides, and some of that starts with the defensive pressure. This one getting away on the baseline, and Smith has the steal late in the shot clock. Wide open three, Chuck Harris comes up short. Talking to Coach Boudreau yesterday. He was upset about the 12 turnovers against UT San Antonio that went for 14 points early on. They're a little careless with the basketball. On Monday, Rob Lanier also talked about how his team was playing a little too cool early and kind of just expecting Sagu to roll over. Today, it looks like the Mustangs energetically are forcing the issue. Well, yeah, one of the things he talked about is he felt like his team was more concerned about showing everyone what they could do instead of playing for one another and competing as a unit. 
One thing that he wanted to see is a more connected Mustang basketball team that was focused on the defensive end, and I think you're seeing that early on in this game. Both teams go into the bench for the first time, and it only took, what, three minutes and ten seconds to get returning leading scorers. Eric Phelps in. He had 24 in the opener against Sagu on Monday. Also into the game, Tyree Smith, who had a really nice double-double against Sagu as well. I think it was a big team message from Coach Lanier sitting Zurich Phelps for being late for a team meeting, and I think that's really going to pay dividends, letting everybody know that there's nobody bigger than the team. The giveaway, Harris up the floor. Yeah, John, you can't have those live ball turnovers on the road and expect to win. Three already. Zurich Phelps. Another three by Harris, this time a deep one. It's off the mark, and this big Western Illinois team is there for the board. That's one thing Coach Lanier does is he empowers his playmakers like Chuck Harris to play basketball. If they feel like they're open for a shot, he's going to allow them to take it. Tough start offensively, though, for Western Illinois when it comes to the turnover. They've given it away five times, and like you said, Boudreau not happy with Bayard. Twelve turnovers down in San Antonio. Yeah, twelve turnovers with 14 points scored off those turnovers, and again, you have to take care of the ball. Ball security was one of the keys that he talked to us in that Zoom meeting, and starting out this game, very careless with the basketball. Long two, goes down. Four points already for Samuel Williamson. Samuel Williamson felt the defense. He backed off of it with a little Kelly Trapuca back step and knocked down the shot. And you can see him playing much more confidently in this game. James Dent in the game, wearing number five for Western Illinois, had 20 points, including a game tying three at the end of regulation to send it to overtime against UTSA. Gets it back here, cranks a three. Not shy about doing this. The bank's not open though. You notice John SMU double teaming on the post up. And one of the reasons why is because. Western Illinois really struggled from the three-point line last game. He made it one of 28. The defense there. Smith not able to hit the hook over Roderick Payne. A transfer from D3, UW River Falls. And here's Payne nice. inside. An incredibly athletic guy. Gets him up in the air with the pump fake. Avoids the body contact. Uses the rim to protect the basketball. Scores it down low. I like the move. Three-pointer around and off for Ricardo Wright. The transfer from Marist in his second year with SMU. This is the pace that I feel like both teams want to play. SMU playing a little bit more confidently defensively and, and connected. And that's what Coach Rob Lanier wants. Say Knox in trouble. Double team. Knox knocked away. Got it back. Harris grabs the steal. Up the floor with Phelps, but Harris takes it himself for two. John, you got to credit the double team by the Mustangs, and you're, you're witnessing the height and athleticism really affecting Western Illinois on those post ups. They're not able to see the opposing side to reverse the basketball, and that's allowing them to get their hands on the ball, get deflections, and go out in transition. Leatherbeck put up 28 threes the other day. Roderick Payne lifting one and coming up short. Comes right in transition, banging, hanging, blocked out of bounds. And a timeout on the floor, but a good start for the SMU Mustangs defensively, forcing a handful of turnovers and leading by seven on ESPN. An SMU soft passing wizard, Don Meredith, connects. He practices the exact same post moves as his 6'9 teammates. Their goal is to always get the ball inside, and then when teams start double-teaming their bigs, they just kick it out for the three. He said for their league and their level, level, they're a really big team. And you can see that with 11 out of the 15 guys on their roster, 6'5 and taller. Thanks so much, Bree. And I know that's something you broke down on film, Stephen, against UTSA. You were even shocked after Coach Boudreaux talked about it, about how much they post up. Yeah, you, you don't see a lot of teams, John, in, in college basketball that post up their, their perimeter players like Western Illinois does. And it was kind of refreshing to see. And even when SMU was working on it, they even called it Barkley. And I remember when I played with the Jazz and we played against uh, the Rockets in the Western Conference Finals, we had the same sort of double teaming that SMU worked on. On two bounces, we were going to go, and SMU did that extensively in, in practice, and it's worked to their benefit throughout this game. Ryan Myers hits his first three of the game for Western Illinois. Good drop off inside, right down low, and the reverse layup goes down for Smith. The interior passing by the Mustangs early on in this game has been exceptional, and they've gotten some easy looks on the inside, and I look for them to continue that because 
because they have a decided height advantage. All the way oh. into the lane until Smith says no. Phelps on the run out. 1v2. And that's blocked, but Smith is there following the effort. Looks like we got an old-fashioned block party on the hilltop today, John. Tyreek Smith on one end and a leatherneck on the other. And both these teams racked up some blocks the other day. Ten for Western Illinois. Yeah, Tay Knox led the charge with that with four blocks against UT San Antonio. But again, you love a team that can protect the rim. Ten to shoot it. D3. James Dent Jr. off the mark. But he has the capability to do that. He pulled nine of those on Monday. Hudson into the lane. Another block, and it's off Hudson and out of bounds. Roderick Payne at six foot eight with a big block. There you have the leather net attacking the rim and Tyreek Smith. Not so fast, my friend. <laughs> Leading to a fast break to on the other end. And Zerg Phelps gets that rejected. But again, you love a team that protects the rim. I just like the energy and focus by both teams. You can tell they both got that first game jitters out of the way. That erratic play, and now they're just out, just out there playing basketball. Heard Rob Lanier say it, and Zurich Phelps say it in the post game. We've just played too cool against Sag U. Nice steal, and the bucket goes down for Braden Lamar, the sophomore out of Bishop Gorman High School, and the foul as well. Just never giving up on the play. Braden Lamar able to wrestle the basketball away and, and you like that physical toughness down on the interior whenever you get that rebound you got to have your elbows out and protect the basketball at all costs Jaheim Hudson picking up the foul Lamar to the line career six of nine at the foul line and hit the foul shot however Smith stepping back, a confident oh. triple goes down for Jalen Smith, eight already. Right now, John, you're seeing the benefits of a player who knocks down his first shot. Jalen Smith didn't have an exceptional shooting game against Sagu, made his first shot, and here he is today, two for two from distance early on. Curling drive by West. The bank is open for the big hook shot over Zerk Phelps. Zaya West is the guy that's going to have to put this team on his back. He's the best player. He can score it on the interior and the exterior. He has to be that commanding force for this team that's struggling a little bit in this first half. First two after a double-double on the road at UTSA the other day. But that's a new in control so far. You never know what the weather will bring. Rain-X water repellency wiper blades apply the magic of rain -X to your windshield. So water beads up and flies away. The improved water beading technology lasts longer. So you see clearly, season after season. Let the weather drive you inside? Never. Rain-X. Outsmart the elements. Find Rain-X water repellency wiper blades at these retailers. Some people just know there's a podcast about that. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. Big tea drinker? Yeah. There's a podcast about tea. He knows, hey, and he wants you to I, know, too. I was listening to a podcast on if dogs know their dogs. There's a podcast about that? Just like he wants you to know about Allstate. There's a podcast about fly fishing called Why Is That Person Doing That? It's called tea -rific. Are you listening to a podcast? Yeah, it's about multitasking. Some people just know there's a podcast about that. Those are the people who know you're in good hands with Allstate. Low ink? Already? Cartridge! -ed. Don't get cartridged. Switch to the cartridge-free Epson EcoTank. Prints up to 5,000 pages. Switch at EpsonEcoTank.com. Just fill it, Joe! <laughs> Oh, 
Welcome back to the busy sports mecca of Dallas, SNU, in Western Illinois. 20 to 11. 11 minutes left in the first half. John Little, Stephen Howard, Brianna Sorensen back with you. This is not all the action going on this week. Hey, just across the boulevard, the men's soccer championship is going down. Championship is going down the semifinals tomorrow. FIU, FAU, I should say, in Charlotte. And then the top seed, SMU, facing number four seed Memphis. All games airing on ESPN Plus, just like this one is as well. Good start for the Mustangs, shooting 53%, leading by nine. Williamson, free throw line jumper, in and out. Big rebound for Tay Knox. John, the Leathernecks came out of that timeout in a zone, 2 3 zone. Mustangs got it where they wanted to, to Williamson on the interior, just not able to knock it down. Mar looking to operate. Spreading the floor. SMU doing some switching on the pick and roll. Bennett gains it back. Only four to shoot. Skirts baseline underneath. Blocked by Williamson. Loose ball. Great job by Williamson coming weak side to affect the shot and come up with the big block. Mm. But Lanier goes down. Emery Lanier is down and holding that left leg. Lanier went down pretty quickly after that skirmish on the baseline. The son of head coach Rob Lanier. Good to see him back to his feet, but not able to put much weight on that left leg. Yeah, that's normally a telltale sign of something that isn't the best, but after that first couple of steps, he walked it off on his own. And that's fantastic news as Lanier will get checked out. Back in the day, the tunnel. Back in the day, John, we just rubbed some dirt on it. Then Where'd you get the dirt? I don't then understand. They throw you back in. <laughs> Did they just keep a bucket of dirt on the sideline? Say, here's your dirt. Absolutely. <laughs> and there was different dirt for the starters than there was from the reserves. Is that right? <laughs> Williams, oh, nice. beautiful feed into Ambrose Hilton. Just can't hit the shot down low, but good sharing. Still getting batted around. Finally, the white jerseys of the Western Illinois Leathernecks. That was almost a perfect pass by Williamson. Ambrose Hilton just not able to knock down the easy lay in the in the paint. Myers, the angle drive, picks it up, tries to whip it underneath, just too strong. A little too much force on that pass by Dak there. Yeah, he was a little too excited with that. But <laughs> he wanted to make sure it got to his player, but it, it got there with haste. It did. The SMU side, they've only turned it over once. That's seven turnovers already on the Leathernecks. Big difference in the game right now. Jalen Smith is hot, and he stays hot. Three for three from D. Boy, John, Coach Bourgeau talked about that. Points off turnovers and all, early on. Leathernecks with seven turnovers and Mustangs with nine early points off of those turnovers. And on the road, John, you are not going to win basketball games turning the rock over like that. Big part of the difference in a 12-point game. Ryan Myers, the lefty, reigns one in his second triple. Can't celebrate against the Mustangs because they are going to get it up and out quickly. That's what they want to do this year, Ambrose Hilton on the pogo stick for two. And that's one of the things that the Mustangs did not have Monday against Sagu was a lot of runouts. See Ambrose Hilton putting a focus on running the big and making sure that defense has to contract. Ryan Myers, who started his career at Iona, played about 20 minutes a game as a freshman for Rick Pitino, so you know he can go. Another travel, or another turnover, Josiah West caught on the travel, eighth turnover on Western Illinois. He also had a, Ryan Myers also had a JUCO National Championship at Indian Hills Community College. And that's one thing that Coach Bredrew wants to have on his team is winners. And he goes out and recruits guys. Regardless of the level that they played in, he wants guys that know how to win and expect to win each day coming out on the court. Doesn't matter what level you play at, he can tell whether or not you can play for it. As Williamson spins, can't hit off of Ambrose Hilton, but I thought it was really interesting. He's got guys that he's brought in from D2, D3, Juco, obviously. He's got a lot of connections out there, and it's not just watching film, it's actually talking to other coaches. Well, you're right, John. And Recruiting in college is, is all about relationships and not only relationships with coaches But having a trust with coaches and an understanding that you're going to treat their players right And I think coach Bourdieu has that and he's building something special in Western Illinois 
Southern Hicks think they have something. They've been picked eighth in the OBC. They were in the Summit, Summit League last year, just moved to the OBC in the offseason. Plus, they doing a good job on that double team on the post, really forcing the Leathernecks to extend their timeout in offensive possession. Yeah, shot clock violation as West was forced to put that one up with only one to shoot. Nothing will excite a coach more, John, than running out the shot clock, having a great defensive stand like the Mustangs did on that last possession. And you're already seeing in this first half a connectedness defensively that the Mustangs did not exhibit against Sagu on Monday. Well, especially in the first half against Sagu. Now in the second half, they did hold Sagu to only 30% shooting and then, obviously, they've done some work in the day off to uh, get a little bit more connected on defense as well. No days off during college basketball, John. Always working. Absolutely. That's what I found out. That's right. Although I did have a day off yesterday. I was the only one. I saw you out in the pool. <laughs> Getting my laps in. Zurich Phelps hitting the fadeaway. He has four. The Nets love to post up. They're going to get a post touch every single possession if they can. West, good feed, head fake. Nice block. Brackus is blocked inside. Another rejection. Samuel Williamson is everywhere defensively today against the Leathernecks. Defensive rotation, he's there. Loose pass, he is there. He is connected on defense. He's getting the Roy Kent kit, right? Yeah, absolutely. Been knocked out of bounds off of SMU on a dive. Seven and a half left in the first half. The Mustangs nearly doubling up, visiting Western Illinois. The ball gets in tie inside. Weak side rotation. Samuel Williamson is there. Leads the transition. The Mustangs are defensively connected today on the Hilltop. Experience like no other. Yeah, you want to find out about the maturity of your team? Take them to Europe, right? Yeah. Put them in some culture Absolutely. and see how they react. Yeah, nothing like traveling with people to see who they really are. I had, I had a, I was fortunate enough to play in, in Spain, one of my favorite places to be, and, and it was a, an ex exceptional experience for all of the, the teams on the Mustang staff. Phelps takes it away up to Williams and for the jam. SMU continues to. Western Illinois tonight. John, defense to offense. Got nine turnovers. SMU 11 points off those turnovers. And it, it's not all the Leathernecks. You got to credit the defense of the Mustangs. Like, they came out focused defensively in this game. And, and really their defensive transition is, is showing it early on. At 13 steals on Monday. Six already in this one. Open three by 10. Comes up way short. Phelps getting ahead. Phelps all the way to the bucket with contact. Doesn't go. Good no call by the officials. The secondary defender went straight up in the restricted area, and those are the type of plays that they're going to let go. Number three, K.J. Lee in for Western Illinois for the first time. He was their sixth man last year. Didn't play against UTSA, but a capable guy off the bench. Roderick Payne banging inside has a second bucket. Well, John, that shows the amount of depth that Coach Bredrew has this year as opposed to last year. You have your sixth man, and he's fighting to get minutes off the bench. He says he wants his guys being able to play multiple positions, knock down threes, but more importantly, play defense. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get on the court. I like Samuel Williams. He's never a guy that's going to absolutely hunt for his shot. At least we haven't seen that over the last two years. But he has gotten to loose balls. He has created loose balls. And uh, he's going right back to the free throw line because of his aggressiveness. Well, John, Samuel Williamson is a stat stuffer. He, he can do everything. Normally, at the end of the day, he's going to have quite amount of stats in multiple areas. And I think it was a conversation with Coach Lanier after the last game saying, look, we need you to be that Samuel Williamson that you can be. You need to play with confidence. You need to spread your rings and fly. Not focus just on scoring, but being that consummate team guy that he normally is. He plays basketball the right way. And I think when he does that, SMU is the benefit beneficiaries of that type of play. Their offensive rebound, Tyreek Smith comes out with it. And gets out of all the traffic to reset. 
You know, Sam Williamson, again, a five-star recruit back in the day. As Smith goes to the hoop and is fouled. But just to finish the point, Williamson, a five-star guy. Yeah. A lot of times you think of the five-star guys with ball hogs and creators. He's a different type of dude. Nice pass, pocket pass into the lane. Tyreek Smith, rim cuts, gets the basketball. And, you know, looking at last game, John, Tyreek Smith with eight offensive rebounds. And you might think that's a lot. But the coaching staff at SMU expects that from him. They said against Kansas State, he had around seven offensive rebounds. Against Oklahoma State, he had eight offensive rebounds, so that's what they're looking for him to do each game in and out. Now, wait, wait a second, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, those weren't on the uh, those weren't on the exhibition schedule. Ooh, those were the secret, secret scrimmages. scrimmages. And while gotta, that's not an speak a, about those in hush tones. Right? Well, while that's not an official stat, you're still keeping stats, and you know that's why Coach Lanier scheduled. Big 12 opponents because he wants them to play that physical brand of basketball. Look, he wants to go to the tournament. Mm -hmm. You don't do that by scrimmage against lesser opponents. And SMU showed up against these Big 12 opponents in these secret scrimmages. In hush tone. Absolutely. But one thing that Coach Lanier did point out is this team, this SMU bunch, together, whether it be in the secret scrimmages or on in Spain or whatever, they haven't lost together yet, which says something. After two three by BJ Edwards, it's a dead spot. That is important, John. And, and one of the things Coach Lanier talks about this team is yeah, they haven't lost together, but you don't have a lot of players on this team that have experienced winning. You look at Chuck Harris, who's on a Butler team that didn't win. He played a lot for the Butler team that win. Denver, England, Georgetown, they didn't win. Last year, the returning veterans, Zurich, Jalen Smith, Samuel Williamson, they didn't win. So right now they're trying to create that winning culture and learn how to win together. And he said that they're doing it real time. And so it's, it's going to be something to see. And you're going to see a better product each game. But I'm just loving the way that they came out in this game. Defensively connected and, and excitement and enthusiasm on the defensive side of the court. And that's when you have an exceptional team that can do something. Night and day, a better spot, a better start than uh, what happened on Monday against Sag U. So for Western Illinois, Roderick Payne, a guy that's a transfer from the B3, but athletically... Chad Boudreau saying this guy was just off the charts when we did all the measurables. And if you think he's athletic, you should see his brother Pharrell Payne out at Minnesota. 6'9", 255, Munster in the paint. Mm. I think they just have athletically gifted in the DNA. So not Pharrell Williams, but Pharrell Payne. The same, the same DNA, though, just gifted. Absolutely. Just gifted in a different way. So Payne knocks down both. 12-point game. SMU's led the whole way. The Leathernecks have gotten out of the zone. Really, they're just trying to disrupt the Mustangs who have a nice offensive fluidity in this first half. Phelps getting rid of it. Smith back to Phelps in the corner. Stepping aside, his three doesn't go down. And a loose ball foul called against SMU. It's going to be a push on Tyreek Smith. Even though Zurich Phelps missed that three-point try, I love the patience. Biting the defense and freezing it with the pump fake, waiting for his opportunity. And you see the, the pressure on the weak side that the Mustang Bigs are putting. Even though they got a foul call, they are always pressuring that offensive glass. Wow, five-second call. Western Illinois can't get it in. And SMU has it right back. By the way, that last foul was on Jaheim Hudson rather than Smith. Okay, John, in this first half, we have a five-second call. And we have a 30-second call defensive call early on yeah as a coach you're circling that Absolutely. you're highlighting that and you're going to play that in the film session tomorrow as way to go guys that's what we need to do smu likes to keep track of kills as well three straight scoreless trips by their opponent and they step in two is good for smu's bj edwards Ryan Myers has hit a couple threes, but throws it right to B.J. Edwards. A foul right at midcourt. Fourth team, make it 15 foul on Western Illinois. The, the defensive anticipation by the Mustangs, getting their hands on loose balls, deflecting passes, 
that last possession just anticipating and grabbing out of the air B.J. Edwards. It's hard to play against a team that is connected in this type of fashion on the road. You know, talking against Coach Boudreau, he said, look, we're not going to have these type of athletes in the Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference. And so that's why we wanted to play this type of game. But he knew they were going to have difficulties on the athleticism front. Go home and play St. Ambrose on Sunday. Open three by Hudson. He likes to take those and knocks down his first triple in an SMU uniform. And, John, that three is going to be open. You notice in pick and rolls, their bigs would just sag and kind of zone it out in the painted area. The coaching staff of the Mustangs knew that was going to be open, prepared the bigs for that. Look at the big for Western Illinois. Just stayed and camped out in the lane, allowing Jaheim Hudson to step into the shot, knock down the three with confidence. And that look is going to be open all day long for the Mustangs. Over his career, a 27% three-point shooter. For a 6'7 guy, not too bad at all. Mustangs so quick on that double team on the block. Davis leans into a three, in and out. Lots of bodies on the floor. Lamar with the rebound. Another block this time by Smith. Whistling his way inside. Davis gets the bucket to go and one. So Shea Davis decides never to say die. Making his way to the rim. But this defense for SMU has been everywhere early in Dallas. Defensive intensity that the Mustangs started with in this game. They started this game blocked focus connected on the defensive side and that translates to your offense because one you're getting easy buckets based off of your defensive transition you saw a lot of runouts you saw a lot of passes many of which did not even touch the ground and when you do that you take your pressure off your offense and you're seeing players that are playing supremely confident western illinois with 12 turnovers and smu with 16 points off turnovers that's an end of a game stat right there and here we are in the first half with three minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the half yeah to your point that's exactly how many times western illinois turned it over at utsa lob inside tyreek smith reverse layup blocked away by roderick payne as he jumped quickly to reject smith's layup josiah west yet to get going he had the double double on monday Back with it in the corner, Kent Smith driving in baseline, shouldering in over the top, and no Cisse's follow, doesn't go either. I love the way the Mustangs are just getting the basketball up ahead in transition. Smith waiting for the skies to clear, and he is fouled. And SMU only one of six at the free throw line, but Smith will try to better that. You put so much pressure, John, on your defense when you get it out in transition. Putting the focus on the Leathernecks to get back, find a man low to the basketball. But the Mustangs are so quick. And Tyreek Smith doing a, an exceptional job of rim running, forcing that defense to contract on him, which is either going to make him open or the three-point shooters are going to be open on the wings. Just looks overall like an SMU team this season that knows what it's going for game plan wise they know what it they want to do on both sides of the floor and here in game number two they're getting it done but john you know what was great for the mustangs was the fact that they did not play to the best of their abilities monday against sagu in, in all intents and purposes they were outplayed by sagu and coach the coaching staff made sure they knew that we're able to reinforce some defensive principles and you're seeing the benefit of that in this game the way they came out williamson ahead and he is awkwardly taken down by bj edwards williamson was going to try to jam another one but edwards makes williamson earn it see the loose ball gets a hand on it williamson gets out in transition good job by the leathernecks getting back preventing an easy bucket Samuel, Samuel Williamson not able to convert through the contact, but able to get to the free throw line and make it the hard way. Williamson, for SMU with seven points to go along with three rebounds, and he's also been in defensively as well. Tyreek Smith, another very productive day, too. And Smith has five points, five rebounds, and just nine minutes of work. 
Another thing you're noticing in this game is the Mustangs are putting that full court pressure. This is going to be a staple of Mustang basketball throughout the year. Pressure throughout the game. They're going to shorten the clock. They're going to try to get some loose balls, but they want to disrupt your offensive fluidity and make you play an offensive set with a shorter shot clock. This is something that Coach Linder wanted to do last year as the full floor pressure, but why couldn't they do it consistently? Well, he couldn't do it because he didn't have the depth. And now he has depth in the backcourt, he has depth in the front court, and that allows you to continue that because if you look at Zero Phelps, his time of possession as far as being on the court was top five in the country. So you didn't want to wear down your superstar by full court pressuring, but this year he was able to rest him with a compliment of player on the bench. Uh, Ambrose Hilton is... His fall is cushioned by Braden Lamar. Made for a nice little pillow of a landing spot. Whenever a player goes up like that and gets in that canted angle, you always hold your breath. And you hear the you heard the collective ah from the crowd as well. Yeah, Rob Lanier decided to have a, a much more um, deep team, as you said, this season. Not necessarily in total numbers. They have about 13, 14 guys on the roster. But the fact that, you know, they have a lot more guys that can play big minutes on this team. Yeah, and I've always said this, but your best disciplinarian as a coach is the bench. Mm. When a player can go on the bench and know that there's someone capable to take his spot and that he might not get back in, players are going to play differently than when there's nobody on the bench that can replace them. Coming up at the half, the AAC top plays, American best, highlights and stats. You know, I'm glad for broadcasters they don't have a bench. Because <laughs> I'd be there about, oh, six or seven times a game, I think. Right. Probably some fans would just rather hear silence. That turnover by the Lebanese was really unforced, just a, a careless pass. The Smith miss, Ambrose Hilton puts it back easily. Timeout called by Chad Boudreaux. He needs to talk about it as the Mustangs are absolutely owning this game. And he's not needed to be aggressive offensively. SMU staying with that full court pressure. Phelps guards guard the ball, J.J. Palakai. And this is where Zero Phelps is elite. He's an elite defender that can disrupt the opposition like not many others in college basketball. So strong and imposing on the defensive side of the court. Led the team in steals last year with 68. Good cut by Braden Lamar for two. Nice passing by the Leathernecks on that position. Finding the open man on the reverse. Knocking it down. Phelps with the touch. Leading in for two. And Zerg Phelps trying to knock it away in the backcourt. He said that, you know, it's not just steals and blocks, though. That this SMU team, Zurich said, is big on deflections. That's the stat they watch for. They absolutely do. But you notice this Mustang team kind of reflects the way Sagu looked defensively on Monday, where they were getting their hands on all the loose balls. They were deflecting everything. They were anticipating, and it seemed like they were one step ahead. Mustangs, the way they came out in this game, seemed like they're one step ahead of the Leathernecks. SMU was only up by four. Southwestern Assemblies of God at halftime on Monday. Right now, he's got more than a 20-point lead. Nico Anderson from Minneapolis rising and hit the 15-footer. Another rebound for SMU controlling the board. Absolutely dominating on the glass on both sides of the court. Fourth three of the first half for Jalen Smith. He is making it rain, and he already has established a new career high with 14 points in this first half. Love to see that at Jalen Smith, and again, that's one of the things that the coaching staff is looking for him to do is not be a backseat driver. They want him to play shotgun, realize and embrace his abilities on the court, and be a guy that they can rely on offensively. SMU has fouls to give. There's one given by Chuck Harris. 15 foul on SMU. They've got even one more to give with 12 seconds left in the half. Quite a different feel. 13 to 2 run this. And the first half for SMU. Anderson. Four to shoot. 
Anderson just voice along too comes up way short. Phelps from three quarter court off the mark, and the SMU Mustangs dominate the first half, 48 to 22, turning Western Illinois over 14 times and turning those giveaways into 20. Um, it, it, a bunch of players that he feels like long and athletic guys that can execute what he wants to do. Well, this game against the Mustangs is not indicative of the product that Western Illinois is going to show throughout this season. He's got a team that is more athletic than most teams in the Ohio Valley Conference, and I think they're going to be competitive. They were chosen eighth in the preseason, and I think they're going to make some damage and create some noise in their first season in the Ohio Valley Conference. Six foot one, Ryan Myers goes up the ladder to kiss one off the glass. Coach Pedrosa isn't even the most successful coach in his family, however, his, <laughs> uh, his wife, Stacy, that volleyball coach at UW-Whitewater, that D3 volleyball program has been dominant over the years they're 24 and 4 right now i think that she's won some championships hasn't she oh man she's just she's putting them away chad's got some catching up to do some doing to do williamson already has 10 points after that jumper here's where smu has been outstanding is defensively and petrakis is fouled chuck harris does not agree i like the Discipline on that last post up by Petrakis. You see, the Mustangs will wait until the player gets around to that star on the American logo. That's when they will attack. And they executed that with the exception of the foul. That's what they want to have defensively. Josiah West, the star for Western Illinois, only two points in the first half. Has to give it up here. Drew Cisse spinning baseline and picked off by Edwards. Edwards with the nice rotation defensively able to intercept that pass and again Mustang starting this second half very connected on defense Good quick hands by Western Illinois to send it out of bounds SMU did not start Zurich Phelps in this game if you tuned in late He was late as well for a meeting and, uh, You know he, he took it upon himself to say yeah I, I Messed up overslept took a nap didn't wake up it happens to me all the time, too but not starting with second half either. Well, I'm glad you weren't late to this because I kind of need you here. <laughs> if I was late to this, I would have missed a lot. Edwards all the way to the rack, waiting in the air, rejected Cisse on the deck to come up with it. And here comes Ryan Myers. Another double team on West. Good ball movement. Right back to Myers, drives, kicks, corner three, Petrakis in the air, the back rim. Love the ball movements by the Leathernecks, just not able to knock down the shot. And again, getting back defensively. Westbrook, Illinois for the takeaway. And that's one thing Mustangs have done continuously throughout this game is force the Leathernecks to get back in defensive transition. So you say doubled again, you can't get it over the athleticism of Harris. Yeah, you gotta freeze the defense with the ball fake. Our skip pass, those long pass against this long athletic Mustang team is not going to work. SMU has 20 points off of giveaways and a foul out front. Going up against Quinlan Bennett, not in the active shooting. This one's going to be on the floor. Bennett's first. Harris after a 16-point three rebound performance on Monday, limited to two so far. But SMU's been able to show off their guard depth in this one. Especially from this guy, Jalen Smith, who already has a career high 14. Edwards curling in. Backhanded layup. Pretty stuff from BJ Edwards. Love the poise by BJ Edwards. Really slowed down in the lane. Didn't rush his shot. Allowed the play to develop into the interior for a nice bucket for the Mustangs. Paint touch three off the mark. Another look at a triple. This time from the corner comes up short for Roderick Payne. And the rebound tracked down by BJ Edwards. Western Illinois was 6 for 28 against University of Texas San Antonio, and they're having similar type struggles today against the Mustangs, going 2 for 15 from distance. Keon Ambrose Hilton posting up down low and has his first double figure game of the season with 10. Most importantly, four of six from the floor. Very efficient for the big man.
Seven on the shot clock. Petrakis backs in. Petrakis forcing one up. Wild shot. Grabs his own miss. Ribbon three by West. Josiah West can't make it going on the rebound. A foul. Let's stay right here. John, one thing my dad used to say is you can't enjoy the rhythm and ignore the blues. And that might have been a rhythm three, but Western Illinois is having a little bit of blues from distance today. Not able to get any sort of consistency from the three-point line. Coach Boudreau saying that he just wants his guys to take standstill threes or, you know, threes where they don't have to move laterally. They're not floating. They're not going to be wild step backs. Well, John, they're getting the shots that they want. They're posting up. The defense is contracting. They're kicking it out to their open shooters. They're just not able to knock them down. And credit the closeout defensively by the Mustangs really affecting those shots. Right finds Zurich Phelps. Just got back in. His step back three from in front of his bench is short. Here comes Myers. Myers through the lane. It's too much length for SMU, but good job by Myers to bring the ball back, force the foul on Zurich Phelps a second. And I like that play by Myers, kind of forcing the action. He gets it in transition. He sees a little seam in the defense, and he attacks that seam and goes into the body, understanding that once you get a player in the restricted arc, you create some contact, you're going to get an opportunity on the line. Ryan Myers out of Brooklyn. Christ the King High School started his career at Iona. Now on here to Western Illinois, just one of the deep bench of players that the Leathernecks have to choose from this season. That's one thing Coach Boudreau told us is, look, he's not a, a coach that wants to play seven, eight guys. He wants to play 10, 11 guys throughout the season. He's going to platoon them, bring them in, because he feels like that's going to give them an advantage. But, John, you can't do that unless you have capable depth, and that's something that he feels he has this season. Sure, 10, 11 guys. They're all going to contribute. They're all going to play. Leathernecks just trying to work out in this non-conference schedule what they're going to be like in the OBC, and they think they're going to be pretty good. Rhythm three by right. Draws iron, but nothing more. Good job by Hudson to keep the rebound alive. A secondary chance for SMU when we return. The Mustangs advancing their lead to 29 over the Leathernecks of Western Illinois. SMU soft passing wizard Don Meredith connects 43 to 30. Everything else is tomorrow, including SMU hosting Lamar. Back to back games for SMU. South Florida at home against South Carolina State. You got Tulane taking on Northwestern State, the Demons. And Wichita State hosting the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. That should be a good John Little back alongside Stephen Howard, Rihanna Sorensen, and our entire ESPN crew for this early season matchup. SMU trying to make it 2-0 early this year. Western Illinois coming off an overtime loss at UTSA on Monday. The trailing by 29. Good entry, and Hudson seals off for a bucket. That was a design play. Out of timeout, little misdirection. Hitting the interior player under the basket for a nice, easy reverse layup. And uh, I'm just loving the execution by the Mustangs, both offensively and defensively in this game. Second assist by Jalen Smith. And it tries to back it in. SMU denies. All the way out to Josiah West. Well off on his three. Tough game for West. He's 0 of 3 from outside, 1 of 6 from the floor. Yeah, but you got to cr credit the defense of the Mustangs, really just making it difficult for Josiah West to get any sort of comfortability, any fluidity offensively. And really, they've done that throughout the whole Leathernet squad. Ugly turnover for SMU, but it's only giveaway number three of the entire game, so certainly something you can look at. I think one thing Coach Lanier will go home tonight thinking his message received <laughs> as far as what he was preaching to his team with the disappointment after the Sagu win on Monday. A delay to get inside by Myers, but Payne is cut off. And a takeaway by Zurich Phelps, his third steal. Phelps up the floor against Payne, flying in last with a dump, with, or with a rejection, I should say, with his elbow. He's getting way up there. That was impressive. West went over to the stratosphere for that block. That's getting north. And getting fouled as well. Heading to the line for two. 
Josiah West not having a great game, but still. Zurich Bills going to the lane. Josiah West erasing that shot like we're erasing your search history, John. Great job. My search history. Talking about who else am I gonna? Who else am I gonna target? I just I just searched blueberry pies. That's the you know, best blueberry pie recipe. That's all I'm in. I'm not mad at that yeah. at all. I'm all about dessert, so I'm right there with you. Maybe Thanksgiving season. It's your best pie. Anything a la mode, I'm there. <laughs> so you put some My best pie is ice cream. <laughs> right? <laughs> ice cream. I am in, sir. I am in. Cy West. Career 56% free throw shooter. That's something that could come up. Second year at Western Illinois. So you're saying there's a chance. Oh, goodness. There's ice cream. There's a chance. Side West is going to get a little break here. Noticing even though SMU is up. The other necks are trying to extend their defense. Phelps looking for a highlight. He's got it. Not sure what happened to Ryan Myers. He might just have hit a weird spot on the floor, I think. I think that's what happened to him. Zerg right? Phelps put Ryan Myers on skates. Step back, fall back, buckets. Phelps. Love it. Love it. And I, I think I saw a little mini mountain there. Right underneath the three-point line. Meyer stepped on or something. Right with a clean takeaway. SMU just rolling. Smith feeling it. Rolling out the three, however. And on the rebound, the loose ball foul goes on Tyreek Smith. His first. Even though Tyreek Smith got the foul going after that offensive board, you love their aggressiveness. You love that relentlessness on the offensive glass. And that's something that translates as a team. Everybody focusing on attacking the glass. And that puts pressure on the opposition, knowing that they got to put a body on somebody. 18 turnovers so far on Western Illinois. Points off turnovers up at 22 now for the Mustangs. Mustangs also out shooting Western Illinois 47% to 27%. Western has missed their last seven shots from the floor. Myers all the way to the rack, blocked away, but foul. Yet it's on Tyreek Smith. Loving the weak side help defensively. Ryan Myers blows by Ricardo Wright. Defensive rotation on point comes over to help. Got a little bit on the body, but again, that team connectedness on defense is something you love to see with your team. Myers in double figures for his first time as a Leatherneck. He accomplished that feat eight times over two years at Iona. A little rest for Jalen Smith, who's been the player of the game so far. Wright takes a seat as well. 30-point advantage for SMU. Mustangs fans excited about the promise this team is showing, especially in this second game of the regular season. They play again tomorrow against Lamar. Western Illinois in a 1 2 2 4 4 press, retreating into his own. Did a good job of affecting the Mustangs offensively. See if they can make something happen in transition. I think the bucket reverse. No good for Calicon, but he's fouled. And it's on Mo Jai, who is getting his first action for SMU this season. He played in 25 games last year in his first year on the Hilltop. Nice luxury for a coach Lanier, able to get some guys at the end of the bench. A little bit of playing time. Because you never know when you're going to need somebody. Absolutely. And Mo Jai is a guy with good pedigree. He was an All-Mac, part of the All-Mac freshman team at Eastern Michigan a couple seasons ago. Six points, five rebounds a game. And he is basically your, your third big right now. The fourth big, perhaps, depending on where you want to put Hudson. One of two at the line for J.J. Calicon. But that's the depth we were talking about. It's a good problem to have when you have multiple players that are hungry 
for playing time and doing what they have to do to earn that playing time. As you see Lanier back in the game after the ankle roll in the first half, Phelps way off on the three in Mochai. All for knocking over Braden Lamar. Second foul on Jai and SMU team foul number seven, meaning free throws the rest of the way, the rest of the 13 minutes for Western Illinois. One and one right now. You're seeing no good give up by Coach Boudreau and the Western Illinois Leathernecks. Extending their defense, implementing that one two two press. Trying to speed up the game, but more importantly, trying to dis disrupt the offense of the Mustangs. One and one for Braden Lamar. Physical guy in his fourth year at Western Illinois. He was injured last season, didn't play at all. But like most of the players on Western Illinois' team, he's a multi positional player, able to guard and offensively play a myriad of different positions on the court. It's going to make the Leathernecks so tough to defend in the OVC. Offensive foul. SMU's Mo Jai, who has picked up his third in quick succession. And, John, I blame that on, on the point guard, on Emery Lanier, because it's his job to run him off the big. Because it's big, you want to free up your point guard. You're going to search and headhunt a little bit. And if Emery runs him right off of Mo Jai and not force him to go headhunt, you don't allow the official to make that call. Another foul on SMU. It's already the ninth team foul on the Mustangs in the second half. Open three. Myers can't hit it. Edwards with a clean rebound and head up, looking to go quick. Much better screen by John. Underneath Phelps, the reverse layup for two. And that was just exceptional read and react by the Mustangs. B.J. Edwards kept his head up. Zerg Phelps saw his man biting out on the wing. Went back door. Nice pocket pass. Easy lay. This is beauty in transition. B.J. Edwards sees Zurich, knows he's going back door. Zurich gets the ball, able to craftily elevate in the lane. Uses that rim to protect the basketball, lays it in. That was an elite offensive move by Zurich Phelps. Another takeaway. Spin move. Edwards up to Williamson for the two-hand flush. Samuel Williamson gets a lot of credit on the start of the Mustangs early on in this game. In that first half, he was doing everything, rebounding, facilitating, bringing it up in transition, hitting the offensive glass, knocking down jump shots. He has to understand his importance for the Mustangs. And I think this is a big game for him and his confidence. The well, free throws are on the way next after another foul on SMU. But the Mustangs just continue to take it away. Samuel Williamson gets it in the interior, elevates, dunks it, Mustang. Taking it away. Yeah, absolutely. When we do it for real next time, can we it's take be that incredible. or can we keep that? Like, yeah. we, let's roll that back. Save guys. it and just play it going to uh, break. Let's roll I'll that back. back. Absolutely. SMU up by 32 as Tay Knox hits the line for two. Now, Western Illinois already in the double bonus. 12 minutes left in the game. It's going to be a lot of free throws. Yes, it will. So this is a team that only shot 56% from the free throw line against UTSA on Monday. And, and there's not too many games you're going to win that are close that you're going to be able to be successful in, knocking down barely 50% of your free throws. Edwards underneath. Sends it out to Lanier. Open three back rim, but Edwards tracks it down. That is Edwards' seventh rebound, six assists, four points. Nice game for B.J. Edwards. Pocket pass again. Williamson to Ambrose Hilton for another Mustang dunk. Stoppage. And now that will send it to break. Samuel Williamson draws a defense pocket pass. Keon Ambrose Hilton does the rest with a nice dunk on the interior. SMU dunking away the Leathernecks. Like you've done it before. Hey. Welcome back to Dallas SMU leading Western Illinois 65 to 31. And in Dallas, I understand they like their double deuces, their 22s. Brianna Sorensen with more on SMU's number 22. Keon Ambrose Hilton. 
had a great season so far. But, uh, you know, uh, Bree's getting things worked out. She's going to tell us a little bit more later. But uh, you've been bragging on Keon Ambrose Hilton as well in this one. Well, yeah, he, he's the guy for the Mustangs that not only is one of the vocal leaders, uh, but he has a presence not only in practice, but uh, over in Spain and in their scrimmages. And that's one of the things Coach Lanier really impressed upon him, the need for him to be that guy for the Mustangs. He's not always going to be that stat stuffer, but just having that presence on the interior is important for the Mustangs. Team three by Joe Petrakis. Get you a big dude, six foot 11. You can hit threes like that. His 71st career trip. Another next continuing with that one, two, two press. Again, trying to disrupt offensively the Mustangs and create a short clock or get their hands on a ball, whatever they can to change up the momentum in this game. Yeah, it's been hard to do that to the Mustangs who are shooting 47%. Harris hasn't been as effective in this one. Stolen away by West up the floor. Shane Davis through the lane for two. Plus the foul. Little guy transferring in from Ranger Junior College down the road. Jay Davis getting it in transition. Nice Euro step, feels the contact, plays through it. I love the concentration, keeping his eye on that rim. I'm, I'm really liking the resilience by Western Illinois in this game. Despite the large deficit, have not seen any give up with Western Illinois throughout this game. Absolutely. And if you don't play with effort, then uh, you're not going to put it Dozen other guys over there on the sideline that will give effort. Emery Lanier knocks down his first three of the season. Mustangs taking with the defense. It's giving them ball reversal. Found Emery, Emery Lanier wide open to step in for a rhythm three. B.J. Edwards the takeaway. Flying to the rack. Hey, don't look now. Triple double watch for Edwards. Six points. Eight rebounds, seven assists. John, Time to start watching. The Mustangs have 26 points off of turnover. Mm. I'll watch that. It's better than whatever I can find on Netflix tonight. Davis against Edwards. Loose on the dribble. Gives it up. Dent. Across the way to Davis again with one to shoot. Davis hanging at the hole, can't get the roll. Rebound tipped around, kept alive. Ambrose Hilton has it. Foul at midcourt by Dent. 13 foul on Western Illinois. John, the Mustangs have had at least five defensive possessions where they have forced the Leathernecks down to the last second in the shot clock. Or a shot clock violation and as a defense that's something that you can hold your hat on have a sense of pride about when you are not allowing them to execute anything out of their offense regardless of their counters or plays to distract from your defense exceptional by the Mustang Williamson bang it, bang it. blocked Good block by Drew Cisse Wide open in the corner. James Dent Jr. can't rein it in. SMU consistently wants to run. Right. Gives it up to Williamson. SMU five of their last seven from the floor. Williamson, beautiful pass. Ambrose Hilton and one. So yeah, I thought I'd, he'd fired it a little bit too fast, but it just stuck to Ambrose Hilton right in the belly. Samuel Williamson uses the pick and roll. The defense comes, converges on him. He had three men. He saw his man, Ambrose Hilton, diving to the rim. Hits him with a nice pocket pass. Ambrose Hilton plays through that contact. Again, Ambrose Hilton does an exceptional job of carving out space on the interior, making himself available for that pass. SMU already has 16 steals in this game. Their record for steals in the game was 19 against Arkansas Pine Bluff back in 2004. It's well within reach as you look at the leading scores. It's been a nice effort by SMU spreading out the scoring well. Davis, triple doesn't go. Lanier, the no look. Hudson, corner, triple over the top. 
the wind got it. It did. It did. Shouldn't have been sneezing that direction. Foul on SMU. They 22 to play. Lanier whistled for it again. Free throws the rest of the way for Western Illinois. If you want to know a sign of how well the Mustangs played in this game, Coach Lanier was able to go deep into his bench at, what, 10 minutes in the second half? Not even. Yeah. I mean, going into Mojai, probably about eight minutes into the second half, something like that. Guys coming back in for Ambrose Hilton has had himself a game. And again, you mentioned it earlier in that first half, how Coach Lanier has talked about how good this team is and could be. And I think we're seeing a, seeing that on the court today with their exceptional execution, both defensively and offensively. Now this Mustang team, defensively, if you want to talk about defensive execution, again, 19 is the record for steals in a game. Arkansas Pine Bluff back in 2004. They had 18 in a game against Tulsa back in 2000. A couple years ago in 2020, a game you and I called against Houston Baptist. They forced 17. Right now, this is tied for four. Jai can't jam it, but that's because he's in the middle of two 6'11 guys who are making a Mojai sandwich. <laughs> Have you ever ordered the Mojai at no. Jersey Mike's? No, I it's outstanding. Not. Nice lob to Mo Jai, threading in between two defenders, like he's Mahomes on a Sunday night ticket. <laughs> Mo Jai averaging two points, two rebounds a game last season in his first season at SMU. Can't either of the free throws. Neither team shooting free throws very well today. KJ Lee back in for Western Illinois, wearing number three. Good rotation. Dent, the triple from the corner, gets the roll. Finally, one going down for Dent, with missed his first four from outside. James Dent Jr. was the leading scorer against University of Texas San Antonio with 20 points, and he's barely been able to get on the floor to get today against SMU. Back to back for Dent. No, nope, can't buy it. Cuts him the rebound. Nearly gives it away. Wow, look at the work by Cisse. And an off ball blocking foul instead. Thought it was going to go the other way, but our lead official, Owen Short, says no, that's a block. Free throws on the other side, but the SMU Mustangs lead it big over Western Illinois in Dallas. Takes on Memphis, a big matchup in the AAC semifinal. You see, we don't call it a game, we call it a match in soccer. Okay, I see what you're doing. Absolutely, so it's a big matchup. It's 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow, and right at that same time, actually, we're going to be counter-programming SMU men's basketball against Lamar. Football against North Texas, a Friday night matchup. It's a late one on ESPN, the dose. Women's basketball against Alabama State on Saturday afternoon. And then, big game, big game against number 15, Texas A&M, Tuesday night. All right, I'm going to ask it. Based on the way this SMU team is playing, if they play connected like this, if they play like they play tonight, what kind of chance at home do they have against the top 15 team in the Aggies? Well, they definitely have a chance if you base on the way that they played against the Big 12 competition, and they're not going to go into that game like they did against Sagu, looking down on them. They're going to be hyped for that game, so I think that's going to be a very competitive basketball game. Looking forward to that one for sure. You can watch it right here on ESPN Plus. So just uh, remember, tell your friends, family, that's where you find it. Look at this Western Illinois team. I have no doubt they're going to be top 25 in the nation in blocks this year, just with the way they fly around. Yeah, they do a, uh, an exceptional job of protecting the rim, but not only that, their rotation after the defensive player goes over. A lot of help defense. But Lanier all the way to the bucket. SMU has been quick in transition tonight. Lanier coming back off that 
first half ankle injury. He's been part of the show for SMU with five points. I think based off of the leg sleeve that he has, that maybe it was a knee injury that knee-ish. That's just a guess by me. Better at these things. Kyle triple from up top, but getting rewarded as Hudson fouls out is James Dent. Hudson was trying to stay with him. Guy athletic enough to guard a guard, but Hudson fouls out. You want to have a good closeout on your jump shooter, but you don't want to foul and allow him the opportunity from the free throw line, especially because that stops the clock, allows them to set their defense. They'll mo most likely get back into that 1-2-2 two, two press, something that you don't want to have happen. Stephen Howard and Brianna Sorensen. John Little here in Dallas. It's been a dominant performance by the SMU Mustangs. As Hudson fouls out, five points, six rebounds. Part of the inside effort for the Mustangs. Foul out in ten minutes. He got his money's worth with that ten minutes. He did. Yeah. Stuff in the stat sheet. Free throw goes for James Dent, Jr. SMU's lead cut down to 33 with six minutes left. Mustangs break that press. Wright gets the open look for three, and he's a natural born shooter. Good ball movement by the Mustangs. They broke the press. You hit it to the middle. Samuel Williamson got it to a shooter out in the corner, and Ricardo Wright stepped into that jump shot and knocked it down. We're a 35% three point shooter. That'll certainly play this year for SMU. It's a wing coming off the bench. Dent off the mark. Wright grabs the board. Here go the Mustangs. Edwards stepping in. His floater. In and out and back in again. DJ Edwards up to eight points. Eight rebounds. Seven assists. Mustangs really doing a good job in fast break and transition. Now with 19 plus 15 fast break points for the Mustangs on the game. Slowing down for James Dent. He knocks down his second triple. He's got seven. National champion is John A. Logan, a community college last season. Off the mark for Williamson, but good work inside. Tyreek Smith has seven. Tyreek Smith is just always a presence around the rim. It's, it's almost like if the shot goes up, you know he's going to be around that rim, tracking the basketball, trying to get an offensive rebound. In this game, he's got nine boards. Yeah, talking about getting your money's worth and doing it in just 13 minutes. Nine rebounds in 13. And Smith up the floor on the pirouette. Kisses it home. Smith in those nine rebounds, five of those are offensive. And again, he's averaged on all games and scrimmages around seven, eight offensive rebounds. So he's tracking for that stat in this game. And again, that's a guy coming off the bench for this SMU team. They are deep. Coach Lanier was talking to him about his performance against Sagu, though, with his eight offensive rebounds. If he would have made two of those layups, he would have eclipsed his career high in his first game as a Mustang, trying to get him to focus on those fundamentals. Right, trying to knock down another three. This one in and out. And a three by Dent this time. He's able to hit his third triple of the game. The timeout called by SMU with three and a half to play. A little step out of the NBA. A lot of 13 if you count Utah. Okay. <laughs> and the players that I'm always going to remember are the guys that took the crazy shots and the point guards. Because the point guard, <laughs> that's how I ate. They would set the table for their big man and that was my point guard in Puerto Rico in Caguas and he actually fed me to one of my career highs in Puerto Rico I had 38 points with him hooking me up with the rock so that's my guy I'm always going to remember a guy that helped me eat like that oh fantastic I was hearing you talk about it, it sounded like you really enjoyed your time on the island of Square at Stony so. oh yeah they that was an amazing time great food great people they loved their basketball as well and this one is going out of bounds off of Western Illinois. 
We'll step away one more time as the Mustangs polish off a big win over the Leather. Seattle Plus, and then uh, I don't think they're going to play West Virginia that same night, but a little bit later on. The next week, uh, they'll take out West Virginia and then either Virginia or Wisconsin and uh, followed by ULM. A game we'll have up here on ESPN+. Plus. And, John, I think tonight you're seeing why Coach Lanier scheduled so aggressively because of the team that he has and the belief that this is a very good team that could do some damage. And I, I think as, as soon as this team believes, and I think this is this game today is going to go a long way to help that belief. But I really do think that this could be a tournament team. I know it's early to say that, but they have all the requisite pieces. They play a connected defense offensively. They have a, multiple scores, and they have a lot of interchangeable parts. A lot to be excited for if you're a fan of the Mel Mustangs on the hilltop. If you're wondering who number 20 is in blue, maybe you haven't watched a lot of SMU basketball. He's a big dude. Seven-footer Xavier Foster got a little time last year uh, But uh, came over from Iowa State As a transfer bumped his noggin a little bit He's got all the measurements Yeah, he does he he could be a tremendous player They're just waiting for that light to click on for Xavier Foster, but this is a guy that he can shoot it from distance. He can handle he can block shots. He can rebound Kind of like your poor man's Wimby mm. But the light just hasn't clicked on for him, but he has The skill set to be a difference maker on the court Jackson young also is for SMU a guy that's played for Hawaii Pacific a division two team and bought on at Texas A&M number 35 under three to play B.J. Edwards' world, we're just living in it. Eight points, eight rebounds, eight assists. This be number nine, no, says Emily, Emery Lanier. Oh, but they love this. Young gets swatted away. Xavier Foster, yeah, he can do a little bit of that. Second board by the walk-on, I love it. On and behind the back, pass two, come on, come on. Edwards, lobs it, Jai, the head fake, good finish. Two minutes left. Still on that triple double watch for Edwards. Still on the watch to get a couple more steals to equal the program record, which was 19. Right now they're at 17. Foul inside the lane. Looks like they're going to get Foster once more. I mean, we're, we're clearing the benches. We are. It's yeah. a good day when you clear the bench. Oh, no doubt. That's not something you got to do against an NAIA team in SAG U the other day. Well, tell me if you felt this, because it felt to me it, against SAG U, even at the end of the game when they were up 7, 17, 15, that the game was close. But this game today, after the first two minutes, it seemed out of reach from Western Illinois. And again, I think that defensive focus and that connectedness as a team that the Mustangs started this game with, really was a difference maker in this game. It's Trey Utter time as well, a walk-on from Argyle, just north of Fort Worth. He's in Western Illinois. They'll be able to empty their bench as well. Buren Burehay from Indianapolis is on as well. We're we'll give a shout out to the walk-ons because I don't think people understand how difficult it is to sit for 38 minutes and then get out and play out, out on the court and try to make something happen. Flying to the bucket for two. D'Amico Anderson for Western Illinois. He gets on the board. It's the leather, Leathernecks over 50. Jai going to take it to the bucket himself. <laughs> Off the mark, Young was in there trying to reach for the rebound. Instead, K.J. Lee comes up with it for Western Illinois. So for SMU, they'll play back-to-back. -back. They'll get back out there against Lamar tomorrow. It's a, nice to have all those players really deep team. As Jai gets fouled. 16 foul on Western Illinois. First foul on Jackson Hamilton. From the cross, Michigan. This is the first really nice performance in front of fans for Rob Lanier's team. 
And one of the benefits of today's game, the fact that Coach Lanier was able to go to his bench after eight minutes in that second half is because tomorrow you got another game. And so his ability to rest his starters early on in this game was very important and well played by the Mustangs. Ninth rebound for B.J. Edwards off that Foster miss. So darn close to the triple-double. Rob Lanier still coaching hard out there. A couple walk-ons out there, Foster, Jai, and B.J. Edwards, who has played more minutes than any Mustang in this game with 26. Uh -oh. Young Will Hoist. And he'll hit. No, he did it. And he did. I, I saw it right there. Jackson Let's Young. Go home. <laughs> We're about to. It's over. 30 seconds left. He's sneaked right under to put one up. As this goes down. For Deer Hay. Shut it down. Let's go home. Complete win for the SMU Mustangs. Forcing 21 turnovers, coming up with 17 steals in this one. Out shooting Western Illinois 47% to 31%, and getting a three pointer from the walk on Jackson Young. Yeah, John, let's not forget those 28 points off of the 21 turnovers of Western Illinois, but an exceptional game by the SMU Mustangs hitting on all facets of the game. Defense, offense, sharing the battle.